Rwanda has had a long, unusually strong bond to Christianity. Missionaries started the Belgian colonization. Belgium gave the church authority to handle the administration. The Vatican focused on Rwanda because it was such fertile ground for Christianity. The people were monotheistic and the kingdom already had a well-functioning central administration. Other African colonies had many gods and poor administrations. With the church monopoly on education, the people were rapidly converted. Rwanda was to become the Christian ideal, the kingdom of God on earth. The Belgian colonial powers and the church ruled through the Tutsis the elite who had long ruled over the actual majority, the Hutus. The Tutsis retained many privileges. Some received higher education. But this led to thoughts of independence. Tension arose between the church and the Tutsis. As independence spread in Africa, the Tutsis turned to the east and contacted African revolutionary leaders. Et là, des gens parlaient de quoi De communisme. Parce que qui disait communisme au Rwanda, c'était tabou. C'était anti-chrétien. Pour la bonne raison, d'ailleurs, Pi XI avait déjà condamné le communisme. Voilà. Christian Democratic Belgium and the Catholic Church would lose power if the independent Rwanda became communist. They switched sides, now supporting the West-friendly Hutu majority. The Hutu leaders didn't miss the chance to encourage ethnic tension by pointing out the former Tutsi privileges and encouraging revolt. Hutu farmers listened. They revolted and a West-friendly coup was staged in 1959. A Christian Democratic Party was formed. European Christian Democrats saw this as a step towards democracy and supported a new leadership. La Belgique et une série de pays comme l'Allemagne où les démocrates chrétiens étaient au pouvoir Euh, ont beaucoup aidé la Première République euh, à stabiliser les acquis de la Révolution. Et cette révolution sociale correspondait grosso modo aux priorités et aux conceptions fondamentales de l'internationale démocrate chrétienne. But the Rwandan Christian Democratic Party was not democratic. The country was ruled not by the democratic majority, but by the ethnic majority, the Hutus. Kujirango Rwanda Yamwinshi, about two Benshi, Barbagizi, Chujihugu, Nuvachichiza, Nabo Bajire Akashiro Mujuchao, Nyaniko Yutka manifested about two. Many Tutsis were killed in the takeover and tens of thousands fled north into Uganda. The exiled Tutsis organized a guerrilla army in order to try to retake power and property. Archbishop André Parodin had influence even in the new regime. He saw the guerrilla as a communist threat to the ideal Christian state and equated them with Satan. Dans tout vous, cette comparaison, le, le Hutu est très catholique, le Tutsi est communiste. Bitkunyenzi. 
nyenzi tukaru dutsiko tukabasirikare babo bagiragazaga gutera ngo bongere basubiza ubutegetsi bwabo cyo giye ntibabishoboye Thousands of Tutsis were killed in retaliation. The regime, backed by the Belgian military, used religion as a tool. It cited the description of Tutsis as anti-Christian communists, adding that they were a race that God wanted driven out. One man of the church connected to the regime, but who later became a critic, was Brother Damasen. Donc voilà, il y a toujours un mélange de religion et de massacre. On préparait en quelque sorte pour faciliter, pour minimiser, banaliser les massacres. Le régime était là. In reality, both Hutu and Tutsi were Christians. Most Rwandans were poor farmers with no ethnic or religious differences. But the ethnical propaganda continued. In 1973, Juvenile Habyarimana became president. A government document emphasized ethnical differences between the groups despite many intermarriages. A pure blooded Hutu would look like this and a Tutsi like this. The difference was in the shape of the nose. It was jokingly called nose politics. A Hutu nose should be wide and a Tutsi nose narrow. President Habyarmana was very religious, as was the Belgian king. The two heads of state became good friends. Habyarimana's regime became increasingly fundamentalistic. The church was integrated into the government. Priests managed party affairs on all levels. And the archbishop was a member of the party's central committee. The Christian Democrats in Brussels appreciated the strong Christian influence and that the regime was anti-communist. The bonds were strengthened when Mathieu and Grimpatz became the contact between the regime and the Belgian Christian Democrats. And to have one party was very, very appreciated in Western countries because you, you have one party, you control your people and uh, you are controlled as alone. You, they control the head of state and the head of state control his people. No communism, no, no trouble. Nothing, the order was to be quiet, not to become communist. With Rwanda, Europe's Christian Democrats and the Christian Democratic International had an African regime they could trust. The Christian Democratic Party took over, tolerating no opposition. Citizens were required by law to be party members. Prisons were filled. It was illegal to belong to a group that questioned the church involvement in the government. Those who protested were imprisoned. President Habyarimana's power increased with international support. France, too, supported the regime to gain local influence, but the exploding population was starving and the tiny elite had confiscated over half of the country's resources. The Catholic Church, tempted by its new power, had done the same. It owned much of the richest land. Prior to the genocide, Léon Sau was Secretary General of the Belgian Christian Democratic Party, PSC. But unlike his fellows, he left the party in protest against the actions of the Christian Democrats in Rwanda. Le Rwanda se précipitait dans une impasse. 
démographico-alimentaire. Et que donc, il allait se passer quelque chose. Mais ça, l'Église ne voulait pas le voir. Parce que, si l'Église avait accepté de voir cela, ça veut dire que l'Église aurait accepté de la mise en place d'une politique de contrôle des naissances. Mais mettre en place une politique de contrôle de naissance dans un royaume chrétien, c'est impossible. But initiating birth control in a Christian kingdom was unthinkable. The alternative was to distribute resources. But the Habyarimana regime chose to use religion to control the people. When the Pope visited Rwanda in September 1990, it was one of Habyarimana's biggest propaganda victories. In neighboring Uganda, the exiled Tutsis had helped socialist Museveni into power in exchange for military help. Soon, a well-equipped guerrilla army, the Rwandan Patriotic Front, RPF, stood ready in the north. The first leader was Fred Rigema, a socialist. He quickly won the support of the starving people. Just weeks after the Pope's visit, the guerrilla invaded Rwanda. The goal was to overthrow the Christian Hutu dictatorship. Si effectivement le Rwanda est une tentative de créer le royaume de Dieu sur terre, seul le diable peut s'attaquer à cette tentative. But Habyarimana realized that a conventional military victory against a well-equipped guerrilla was impossible. So the party formed a militia that would become the backbone of the genocide. The youth organization of the Christian Democratic Party was called Intrahamve, We Who Fight Together. Rwanda was militarized. The youth militia was trained by the military, police and the politicians. Habyarimana ordered businessmen to equip them. Niyo mpamvu nsaba Niyo mpamvu nsaba Secretary National niyo mpamvu nsaba umunyamahanga mukuru wacu kumvikana n'abacuruzi kugira ngo dushake ibitambaro by'interahamwe. But they didn't just provide clothes. The businessman Felician Kabuga imported machetes. The violence against the Tutsis escalated. Terrorism occurred openly, often after inflammatory party meetings. Soon, human rights organizations reported genuine massacres. The United Nations was also concerned and forced the regime to negotiate peace with the Tutsi guerrilla RPF in Arusha, Tanzania. With international support, the disaster might have been avoided. But the Christian Democratic International advised the regime not to sign any agreement of power sharing. The Tutsi guerrilla were still perceived as communists. Il s'agit en fait de protéger une œuvre de Dieu contre les forces du mal. Instead of negotiations, the Christian Democratic International proposed immediate elections, despite the ongoing war. But the guerrilla and the exiled Tutsis were not allowed to participate. The Christian Democratic International's resistance to peace talks benefited the Christian Democratic Hutu extremists. The war went on. The propaganda became increasingly religious. The regime-friendly press printed the Hutu Ten Commandments, which encouraged persecution of Tutsis in all parts of society.
one paper rejected talk about love and unity in a dialogue between Mary, Jesus and Joseph. Habiaramana was portrayed in a bishop dress. The church also participated, describing the Tutsis as cursed by God. Et maintenant, psychologiquement, le tout, c'est ton, c'est ton ancêtre. Comment voulez-vous alors Ça n'a rien à faire. Vous tuez, en disant que vous attaquez. Donc, c'est l'autodéfense. A few months before the genocide, a youth leader left in Trahamve and informed the world that the genocide was being planned. We find <coughs> dozens of evidence in the archives from the foreign minister in Belgium. And this archive shows very clearly that uh, not only Belgium had this information, but that this information was shared with the United Nations, the US, and, and, and France. None of the informed countries acted. The guerrilla advanced. Habermana knew the war was lost and desperately tried to hold on to his power. Against the Christian Democratic International's will, he signed an accord with the guerrilla. Intrahamve and the army, already well into planning the genocide, regarded Habermana's actions as treason. On April 6, as he returned to Gigali, Habermana's plane was shot down. Everyone on board was killed. Just hours later, the most time-efficient genocide in history began. Everywhere, Tutsis were murdered. Killing came to be called work. In one place, moderates refuse to kill the university town of Butare. New interim president Cindy Kubabo was concerned about the resistance. He went there personally to convince people to help in the slaughter. Baba Kare Bamu Babuchan, and you know, but in Yagan, you know, the Chan, and a Kunda Bandi. Have another by Yabaguan or Chan, which I'm giving Yagan, Yabu Tikan, you never go on, you know, Kura Kuru, you are, and you need your singing. Are you calling a Haji Hib, you give your name? Well, I can give you a mamma, young first, you have to first at Quays. Conati, oh, go out quick, Chan. Niko byagenze ibyo byose uko tigiye kuryaza guko ibwiriza yazaga exception rapide gutye nyi Konata watkwira kana koko mutande kumana mutanda apa Ati mumenye ko ati uwo muntu bamwiciye se mwicira Nino, we say, say, Kuno Adios, no Nangramuzana Munzua and Gumuzavan, or Munuzavanamut. All Tutsis were to be killed, not even babies were spared. No one must be left who could seek revenge. During the three months' genocide, the church supported the regime. Rwanda's Catholic bishops wrote a document promising to obey and support the new president and his regime.
many of the country's priests and nuns helped kill Tutsis. Ndetse ni nitege kurya imana ko tugomba kuba imana tukayisenga ni itege Christian Democrats in Brussels also supported the regime even in June documents encouraged Europe's Christian Democrats to continue supporting their friends in Rwanda they gave the regime diplomatic support in contacts with Belgium. Même gouvernement intérimaire qui ne faisait rien pour arrêter les massacres et qui ne disait même rien pour les condamner. Bien évidemment, puisqu'il les, les, il les organisait. Mais vu de l'extérieur, dans la situation de l'époque, Les amis du gouvernement intérimaire disaient il est dépassé par les événements, il ne peut pas empêcher les massacres. Et ma réponse était de dire ben, au moins qu'il les condamne. Et forcément, jamais cette condamnation n'est venue. The European Christian Democrats looked for mitigating circumstances. They found that the Tutsi guerrilla had committed war crimes. Those trying to stop the genocide, the Tutsi guerrilla, were accused of genocide on the Hutu. No documentation was presented. In July 1994, the Tutsi guerrilla defeated the genocidal regime, which fled to neighboring Congo, then called Sair. A million people were dead and three million were displaced. The Christian Democratic International did its best to salvage the influence of its party members. Alain de Brewer went to refugee camps to meet with the Hutu regime. They began promoting the peace accord that the Christian Democratic International had rejected before, sharing power with the Tutsis. They continue to maintain the fact that the, the government, the power in Rwanda, should be shared with the killers, with the, the perpetrators. And of course, this is a tremendous both po political and moral, uh, moral mistake. Uh, but they did maintain this position despite the fact that everybody was saying at the time that it was the transitional government which was carried out the, the, the massacres. In Arusha, an international court was established. The regime's party leader, Engirumpatz, was accused of genocide. The Christian Democratic International stuck by its friends and defended Engirumpatz. After driving out the genocide regime, the Tutsi guerrilla took over. Rwandan prisons were filled with thousands of murderers. The people had been the regime's primary tool for genocide. But the rank and file, fed on racism, religion and fear of communism, never lost faith that God was on their side. We take a Dore ubwoko buje buturuka mu gihugu kikasikazi ishyanga rikomereza hagurutswa rituritse ku mera zisi 
bitwaje imiheto n'amacumu n'abantu b'inkazi nti baba barira ikiriri cyabo gihorera nk'inyanja bagendera ku mafarashi umuntu wese ateje urugamba nk'uri mu ntambara kandi ni we bateye wa mukobwa w'isiyoniwe aya niyo magambo nyine yasomye icyo gihe mu nama nyine ayabwira abaturage umwanzaje mu aturutse mu majyaruguru y'igihugu kandi ni waje ashaka kandi inkotanyi zari zateze tutse mu majyaruguru y'igihugu o ijambo risomye muri cyagiye bazaga baje gukubuza ite biriya nese nimba umuntu ubwigiye arasura somye rwose arabyumva eh ti buri cyashaka buri byabindi koko biri muri mu biriyo koko buri eh the christian democratic international asked the new regime to release prisoners they refused the christian democratic international and its friends became more and more aggressive warning of a military return. Bo ico giye rero nibwo eh ingabo za Yesu kongo zibwe ingabo za Yesu ni kintu cyitwa ubuhanuzi bise nyine mu banya masengesho nyine bo muri Kongo nibo bya nibo bya nibo bya komotsi kuko ari abahanuzi nyine bahanu yebati mwebwe baba kondutse bati imana irabakunda ati giye kizaki giye kizaki kizagira muwe mu gihe nyine bamwe baje mu gihe gucha Alan de Brewer and Wilfred Martins of the Christian Democratic International still see nothing wrong with their support of the Rwandan party Several of the regime's leaders have now been convicted for genocide no one from the Christian Democratic International has been charged. Several priests and nuns have been convicted for participating. Mariana, now grown, still goes to the church to mourn her parents. <laughs> 